I mean, there's a foundation that needs to be put into place. You don't just say, I want this, I want that, you know, send me this, send me that. And then you have the people that are very sophisticated and they want like crazy experiences within their marketing and their advertising. So it's kind of like two ends of the spectrum. You've got the people that know so much and want to take advantage of every new technology. And then you've got the people that didn't even want a sound logo. And now they're behind the times a bit and they want to get caught up and they want to get caught up today. And I think that it's that balance to show them that it's a very iterative process. Welcome to Audio Branding, the hidden gem of marketing. Sound plays a more important role in human behavior and our decision-making than you may realize. In this podcast, I'll help you understand the art and science of sound so you can better influence others in business and your life. I'm your host, Jody Krangle. Let's delve a little deeper. Hi, and thanks so much for joining me today. It means a lot to me that you're taking the time to listen. As a companion to this podcast, I have regular Clubhouse discussions about audio branding and other sound-related topics on a weekly basis. Occasionally, I record them. This gem of a discussion was about the power of digital audio and how companies can leverage it to connect on a deeper level with their customers. There are so many ways to do that and so many options for the type of digital audio that can be used these days. But the four people who are my panelists in this discussion, Gina Isham, Ahmed Bouzid, Audrey Arbini, and Steve Keller are all experts in this field, each with their own perspectives on the medium. All of them offer actionable tips and even some predictions for the future. Given that this discussion happened last year, quite a lot of them have already come to pass, which makes this discussion all the more important. If you'd like to participate in these chats in the future, join me in the Power of Sound house on Clubhouse and keep an eye on the upcoming rooms that happen on Wednesdays and Thursdays at 2 p.m. Eastern. For now, though, here's a taste of what one of those rooms sounds like. So welcome, everyone. We do have a room chat, just in case you want to ask a question and you don't want to come up on stage to ask it. You're welcome to put it in the room chat and we can ask it for you. Also, at the top, you'll notice that I have a link to my latest podcast, which is with Dr. David Allen, who talks about audio logos and Sonic Logos. He has a book on that. Uh, that's a really interesting book to read. And I highly recommend people pick it up or, uh, or listen to the podcast if you want to have a, a more detailed discussion and listen to what we talked about uh, in regards to uh, Sonic Logos and things like that. For now, thank you so much for everyone who has joined me up on stage here. These people are very well known in their craft and experts in digital audio, which is what we're going to talk about today. And I wanted to start us off by asking Ahmed, who is really the person who got us all together. Thank you, Ahmed. <laughs> uh, can you define sure. digital audio for us and, and introduce yourself and, and what your tie-in is to all of this while you do that? That'd be great. Yeah, absolutely. Can you hear, can you hear me? We can hear you just fine. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Thank you, Jody, for uh, organizing this um, you are a professional and I'm always striving to, to come close to how professional you are, but I'm very happy to be here with the other professionals, uh, Audrey, Gina, and Steve. Um, so what is digital audio? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. I think we can all agree that we have seen in the last few years, um, the emergence of audio, um, that is not traditional audio which usually we equate with radio, linear radio, you tune in, uh, you have your favorite stations and, and, and uh, whether, whether you're driving your car or you're at home. What we have seen the last few years is the emergence of audio um, in the manifestations would be, for example, podcasting that you can listen to from your, um, from your, from your uh, desktop or from your mobile, mobile smartphone. Okay, so that would be, I think, that would be an example of digital audio. Another one might be perhaps when you go to a website uh, and you can read an article, but you can also listen to it. I would call that digital audio. I also call digital audio, uh, for instance, 
this here, um, this uh, uh, this forum, Clubhouse and Twitter Spaces, where we are engaging in audio uh, conversations uh, in a new uh, in a new way. So, I mean, if you if you if you look around, I think you'll be able to see other manifestations of it. Um, and the hardware manifestation of the arrival of digital audio would be, for instance, smart speakers or AirPods, right? Um, and I think, and we can talk about um, why all of a sudden sort of we're, we're seeing this, uh, but that, that's, that, to answer your question, I think that's, that would be a definition uh, by pointing to uh, what I think are manifestations of, of the new audio of audio point or digital audio. Sure, that makes a lot of sense. Thank you. And uh, Ahmed, I know that uh, Witlingo, who you are the CEO of, uh, also provides testimonials in audio format. So that would be another format of that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Um, so I think I'll answer your, uh, your second part of the question, which is who am I and what am I doing yes, here? Yes, <laughs> please do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So I'm Ed Bouzid and I'm a founder, um, CEO of Witlingo. And what we do at Witlingo is we take audio seriously uh, by engaging with brands and helping them uh, add to their marketing mix digital audio in many, many different ways. Um, so, for instance, like Jody was mentioning, um, wouldn't, be, wouldn't it be cool and more than cool, meaning delivers value to, for example, collect testimonials from your customers, the ones who really like what you do, love what you do. I mean, if you go to Jody's um, website, you'll see an example of that, but she has like lots and lots and lots of big brands. And I'm jealous of that. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, imagine, I mean, you, you, not imagine, but go to her website and check out um, what people have to say about her. And, 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 and when you hear that, you can hear their enthusiasm, you can hear their authenticity, you can hear their character, and 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 and, there, and, and that just conveys a lot more than than text, um, which which is a traditional way you have you know the blurbs VP of X Y and Z, um, said this this and that right, um, and usually sure. it feels it feels like boilerplate, um, but yeah, so that's one of the I would say that's another manifestation of audio is now you might go place uh, you know in websites and you'd see uh, things like audio testimonials and other versions of that. Yeah, and I'm also using it as uh, reviews of my podcast, actually. So there is a player there that people oh, nice. can record voice messages. And uh, yeah, and Thursdays on this, uh, in this room, we actually at 2 p.m. Eastern have a room called VIP Voices in Podcasting. Myself and Cheryl Hollings and Ann Ganguza all have a chat. And we have a Witlingo station so that if anyone has comments or questions, they can go to the station and they can just speak them to us and we'll have their message direct from their own voice. And, and you know, Ahmed is correct in that it really does let you hear the personality of the person who is either giving you the testimonial or doing a review or asking you a question. And it really helps with connection, actually. That's a, a really good part of, of that. So thank you for creating that, Ahmed. I'm sure there are other ways to mm -hmm. do it, but I, I really admire what you're accomplishing there. Well, thank you. Them. You're You're very generous. Thank you. <laughs> I want to move on to uh, Gina, and I want to ask you a question about metrics and, and if you know how digital audio, um, if there's a way to see the metrics that indicate that it's actually seeing some adoption. Are you seeing this being adopted more um like more, just more in general, I guess. And if you could also let us know uh, who you are and, and what you do as well, that would be great. Um, I'm not sure how much I can help you with the metrics per se, because it's kind of a loaded question, because I'm not sure what form of digital audio you would be suggesting. Um, Any form that, that you think, you know, you, ha you have some insight on, that would be perfect. And, you know, it, it doesn't necessarily have to be specific metrics, more are you seeing it adopted and how are you seeing it adopted? Um, well, yeah, the general answer is yes, I am seeing it adopted more and more. I think um, my my thing is uh, for COVID, when COVID ended up happening, I think that people found more and more ways to connect. And I think audio was one of them. Maybe that's because people, you know, stopped wearing pants and doing their hair and all of that. Um, but I just think that we had these totally. things like, <laughs> I, you know, it, it just is, it is what it is. But um you know, we had these smart speakers and we put them in our living rooms and our kitchens and said, okay, now what? Like, 
we figured out how to turn them on. We figured out how to do grocery lists and turn on music. Um, and then I think that during COVID, people got a little bit more experimental. Um, before we actually started getting back to work, we had a lot of free time and we couldn't go anywhere. And so I think that people were experimenting with the idea of using sound uh, as opposed to strictly visual. Um, it, was, it was more of an idea to, to play with, to keep our minds you know, fresh and all of that stuff. So it, in experimenting with a new idea, we actually went back to an original idea, you know, going back to having just that radio in our kitchen or in living room and everybody would gather around and listen to the radio. So it's kind of like, in my opinion, it's a full circle thing. So metrics wise, I can't tell you, you know, 5 million people switched over last month or something like that. But uh, it does seem like something that people are more responsive to, uh, more interested in trying out and seeing as an option rather than going, oh, this is just the way that I entertain myself. So, Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, just so you know, it keeps popping up poor connection. So I don't know why, but just we can hear you, know. you just fine. So go ahead. Oh, good. Yeah. Okay. So if I drop out, that's why. Okay. Um, but yeah, so for people that don't know me, my name is Gina Isham. I'm a sonic brander and a sound strategist. My company is Dreamer Productions and I consult, create and educate people on the power of sound and marketing. I also have a podcast just like Jody's where we study the power of audio. It's called Sound in Marketing. And this season just started up last week. So we're uh, episode 102 just aired yesterday. Congratulations. um, Thank you. I had a big hiatus. I got to 100 and then I was like, I need a break. Um, (laughs) I don't blame you at all. (laughs) I I know you know. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. And um, yeah, so anyways, this, this season we're focusing specifically on sonic branding, um, speaking to companies that actually are implementing it. I've done a lot of um, peer suggest, uh, peer conversations, but now I'm actually talking to the companies. So the two episodes that have just aired are with National Public Media, who do, who do the corporate sponsorship ads for NPR. Uh, next up is, I think, who's next? Oh, Chevy. I interviewed the advertising manager that was responsible for Walter the Cat. Oh, and that'll so be fascinating. I wanted to talk, yeah, I wanted to talk about how the heck they came up with uh, Rock Candy Mountain. Uh, and then after that is Affleck. And after that is Home Depot, which I just finished editing. And I'm super, super excited about that Fantastic. one. Fantastic. So, yeah. So if you guys want to drop in, just soundandmarketing.com backslash podcasts, and you can check out that. Um, and if you work for a company that is interested in sonic branding or uh, something that we'll get into because Audrey and I, or Audrey brought it up, but uh, there's so much to sonic branding. My feeling and philosophy is you need to start with strategy first, mm-hmm. decide what part of sonic branding actually fits for your company or your brand or your product, because it's not going to be everything. And you might need to go first, second, third, rather than just, you know, vomiting out everything that you possibly can <laughs> into the uh, metaverse or however you're operating. So that is a a brief synopsis of what I do. Fantastic. Yeah. And people should definitely check out the podcast. It is excellent. Um, I, <laughs> I've been on it. <laughs> and so, you know, actually, we've been on each other's shows. <laughs> so that's that, right. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's that was a lot of fun. Yeah. Are you looking for ways to improve your company's or podcast's impact? You'd be surprised how powerful the use of an intentional audio branding strategy can be. Want to know more? I have a free downloadable PDF that gives you my five tips for implementing an intentional audio strategy at voiceoversandvocals.com slash audio dash branding dash strategy. That location does ask to put you on a mailing list just to send you updates on when the new podcasts come out. But if you really don't want to give your email out, I understand. Just contact me directly. My email is all over my website and I'll make sure you get that PDF without needing to sign up anywhere. If you do sign up, though, you also get access to a resources section called The Studio, where I have videos, white papers and PDFs, discounts from my guests, and snippets of audio from my guests that no one else gets to hear. So maybe it's worth your while. Totally up to you. And of course, if you're looking for voiceovers, you can get in touch with me about that, too. Now, back to the podcast. 
Yeah, there is. Well, I mean, podcasting is, of course, digital audio. So that's also rising. And, and a lot of people are hearing about it now. So these days, if you if you tell someone you have a podcast, they know what you're talking about, as opposed to someone saying, what's a podcast? <laughs> so there's that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's just one form of digital audio that we're talking about here. And if anyone who is on the panelist uh, list here has any actual numbers that you want to share, you're more than welcome to do that. Uh, but I do want to move on to the next question that I was going to ask. And I wanted to ask Steve this, if you're uh, able to answer. Um, I, I, again, I think Gina sort of uh, answered this in a lot of what she was saying. But do you think that there's a reason that we're seeing the rise of digital audio beyond COVID? <laughs> and if you want to introduce yourself as well, that would be really great. Sure. Uh, I'm Steve Keller. I'm the Sonic Strategy Director for SXM Media. Um, and uh, in SXM Media, uh, we represent brands that advertise on all of our platforms, uh, Sirius XM, uh, Stitcher, um, SoundCloud, Pandora. Uh, and I work in an organization called Studio Resonate. And Studio Resonate is an audio-first creative consultancy uh, and a lot of times when people hear my title, Sonic Strategy Director, they say, oh, that's pretty interesting, but what the hell do you do? Um, and the easiest way I've come up with it to describe my job is that I'm blending sound science with sound art to help our clients make sound decisions. Kind of to Jaina's um, point, uh, uh, a lot of times when companies begin to deal with sound, they jump right away to tactics. Um, you know, thinking about Sonic Identity, for instance, oh, we need a brand theme or we need a Sonic logo. Um, and so they jump right into trying to create or design those assets um, without really thinking about a strategy behind the choices. Um, so I, to, to answer your question, yes, I think we're continuing to see digital audio um, rise out of COVID. Um, I, you know, I think part of that maybe is a little screen fatigue. Uh, I think part of it is as we move into the metaverse, which contrary to popular belief, isn't here yet. Um, right now we're living in what I call the second life of second life. Um, <laughs> That's as, a good term. As, <laughs> I love as that. We move in, as we move into the metaverse, um, you're going to see a lot more uh, interactions uh, happening through sound, through voice, um, less about, you know, touching a screen or, or using a touch interface. Uh, and I think so that that's going to drive more digital adoption, digital behaviors. But just in terms of some of the numbers, I mean, currently um, <clears throat> Edison did a uh, share of ear research um, back in uh, 2021, uh, and they tabulated, at least in the U.S., uh, 193 million monthly digital audio users. They're spending about four hours a day with audio. Um, that's huge. And that, that's a, that was like a 4% increase over the previous year and almost eight more minutes um, a day. Wow. You've got 53% um, of these digital audio listeners using a free ad supported streaming audio service, uh, 27% being subscribers. Um, you have 40% of adults turning to audio daily, um, more than any other media. You have a hundred million people listening to podcasts every month. And, you know, couple that with the fact that there are over a million podcasts that are out there. Um, and just looking at the numbers between 2014 and 2021, you saw about a 29% decline in listening to terrestrial radio, but you saw an 81% increase in streaming audio. You saw a 204% increase in podcast listening, 10% um, increase in uh, satellite radio. So, you know, when you, when you do look at the numbers, um, you do see this trend. And I think, you know, with the rise of um, 
social audio clubhouse certainly being one of the first movers there and now a number of platforms adopting that you you're seeing more interaction there you know we talked about smart speakers um you know one in three households now have smart speakers um and there are over 500 devices in the u.s that can be directly controlled with with voice so you're going to see that um taking over more. And I'm particularly fascinated in what's happening with the, in the automotive company. Um, because in the automotive space, automobiles are moving more and more in electric automobiles into immersive environments as uh, self-driving technology um, takes over more and is, it's better and more easily adopted you'll see automobiles becoming spaces not just for transportation but spaces for entertainment spaces to work in um, even spaces for health and wellness and there's a huge audio component that's a part of that down to using wearables to look at biometric signals and using that to then um, have ai suggest playlists for you to um, listen to or algorithms actually composing audio um, on the spot to, to meet certain needs and certain jobs. Uh, and, you know, it's fascinating to me to think that automotive companies are shifting from being transportation companies into technology companies. If you saw in the news this week, BMW's talking about um, you know, starting to charge for, oh, you want different kinds of sounds in your vehicles? Great, you know, for two ninety nine a month, you can have this particular sound. And, and uh, you know, having like in-app purchases within the vehicle. Uh, and oh, last- that's fascinating. <laughs> last month, uh, the CEO from, uh, from Mercedes-Benz, I actually was looking at this earlier, so I have this quote here. Um, he says that um, uh, your car could be uh, in autonomous mode in a 4D cinema, loudspeaker boosters in the seat to give you 4D sound. If you get an S-Class or an EQS or something, um, you try that out, it kind of blows you away. You can even work with the car to use your air conditioning, your sound, and your lights to create the best movie experience that you have ever had. Could you monetize that? Probably. So. I'm sure the automotive companies are already trying to think about how could they become media companies? Um, and mm -hmm. you may see them investing more and more in acquisitions, in sound companies, in sound AI, uh, in audio, um, and becoming competitors with existing platforms um, that are that are already out there. So anyway, I'll shut up and get me on a roll <laughs> and I just keep keep talking but yeah i i i just think you're going to see more and more of that, that is, adoption yeah. yeah it's really fascinating stuff and i i love the idea that you can make your car sound more luxurious by its sound <laughs> Uh, that the higher end cars are likely to go more into this because it makes them sound more expensive. I think that's, you know, we, we want that kind of experience and, and that's what you pay for. But yeah, it's, it's really a fantastic idea to have a surround cinema in your car. I mean, what are you going to do when you're not driving the car anymore? I guess that makes a lot of sense, Steve. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I, I mean, th th think yeah. about it. If you, if you're spending this money for a car, yeah. If you don't have enough money to create a surround sound room in your house, go sit in the vehicle. I mean, it's electric, so it's not going to emit any poisonous gases. So it'll be a, you know, it'll be an entertainment space yeah. uh, that that you inhabit um, even when you're not driving. Which is I love funny, it. Which is funny. I have to put this in there. When I was making uh, music albums, because I started as a singer songwriter, I remember testing out the demos in every different audio source. So we would listen to it in like the really good speakers in the studio. And then the next step is I would go and sit in my car and listen through the crappy speakers. So it just kind of like goes full circle where yeah. I used to use that to monitor to see, does it sound good in this? If it sounds good in this, it will sound good in everything to a uh, lap of luxury. It's 
fantastic. Yeah, such a good point. Yeah, I, I remember that too, too, Gina, like the, if we wanted to hear how an album was actually going to hear uh, sound to most people that would be listening to it, we would go into our car. <laughs> so exactly. yeah, I, I totally get it. Yeah. I know that we're all dealing with a lot of stuff these days, so I particularly wanted to acknowledge those that have taken the time to leave honest reviews of this podcast. Skyle Renee, I think it's Renee, it's spelled R-E-N-E, so that's what I'm going to go with. I hope I got it right. Had this to say. Worth it. This podcast is so good that I just want to sit and stay in my car a little longer. Thanks, Jody. You're very welcome, Skyle. And thank you so much for taking the time to write a review. Now, back to the show. Um, uh, Audrey, I wanted to ask you to uh, introduce yourself as well, but I also wanted to ask you if you knew of any other digital audio uh, areas where people are, where, where it's being used for customer engagement. I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. Sure. Thank you for inviting me. I totally agree with what Gina said about small speakers and surround sound and scaling. And Steve, you are always a wealth of knowledge. Um, I'm Audrey Arbini. I'm the CEO, founder, and executive producer of Audio Brain. We've been doing sonic branding, Audio Brain, for 19 years, and I've been doing it for about 26. Um, I find, and we were talking offline before people came on, about the change that's occurring now. Like every year, there's like a shift of something. And this year, the shift is to, I mean, all the technology companies and all, they, they get that. But I'm talking about the corporate companies that didn't even know what a Sonic logo was before or had no interest in voice branding. Um, they are now coming in, like Steve said, they want everything. They want a podcast, they want events, they want, I, I even have some projects which are really kind of sound silencing projects because of the environments that they're going into. Um, it's been a very interesting year, um, but very, very busy. The thing that we're not struggling with, but trying to wrap around is that People that didn't want anything now want everything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and they don't understand that we have to do a strategy and we have to really see what's going to be right for them, you know, where their touch points are, where they're hitting their consumer that we can really um, leverage voice and sound. I noticed one thing is that they are paying more attention and they are doing more in their advertising, like they're reviewing the voices more and they're, they're getting a little bit more educated on um, what the right persona is because we have to do, and we were talking about that before we came on, like this whole educational curve. And I'm fortunate that I got an accredited uh, a fully accredited course that's going to start in September uh, at FIT. And it's amazing because it's sonic branding. And that's kind of where it starts is that getting the word out each one of us in our own ways to get people to understand what this is. I mean, there's a foundation that needs to be put into place you don't just say, I want this, I want that, you know, send me this, send me that. And then you have the people that are very sophisticated and they want like crazy experiences within their marketing and their advertising. So it's kind of like two ends of the spectrum. You've got the people that know so much and want to take advantage of every new technology. And then you've got the people that didn't even want a sound logo and now they're behind the times a bit and they want to get caught up and they want to get caught up today. And I think that it's that balance to show them that it's a very iterative process. You know what I mean? 
Uh, it's not something that happens overnight. There's research. Mm -hmm. There's, you know, where are you hitting your consumer? Um, so that's kind of like what's going on. But I find the areas um, of the newcomers exploding. And I find the area of the people that really know wanting to go like way out there, like do events that are, are advertising because of, you know, the, uh, the things they set up in advance to promote them. So that's kind of where my world has been since Olympics number 11 in February. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, uh, it's just been nuts. It's, it's crazy. But I think there's a big educational curve. I agree with Gina. Yeah, there's a lot going on right now. I think that people are starting to catch on to this whole thing of sound being important, which is good to hear. <laughs> we actually are wanting to open up questions in the audience. If anyone wants uh, to ask the very knowledgeable people here on stage a question, you are more than welcome to raise your hand or you can put a question into the room chat and we can ask it on your behalf. You're welcome to do that too. But uh, yeah, I'm interested in exploring this area of what new ways you've seen digital audio being used. Um, if, uh, Ahmed, Steve, Gina, Audrey, if any of you have any ideas on what you've seen, that would be fantastic to hear about. Go ahead, Ahmed. So uh, very quickly, uh, actually what I, uh, I would like to answer the question uh, of why why are we seeing audio emerge? I think part of it is the is uh, is COVID, obviously pandemic and all all the stuff that happened. Uh, but audio was was emerging long before 2020. Um, I think podcasting was was on the rise. 2018, 19 was really we saw this the rise um, of audio becoming a real thing as opposed to a fad. Um, but I think uh, I think if we if we ask ourselves that question um, and get some answers, I think uh, it will enable us to uh, talk about the value, right? People don't adopt something unless it's a fad, right? Um, unless there is true value. And given the numbers that Steve was mentioning, clearly there is va value here. Um, and I think for the end user, right? So we can talk about value for the end user and for the marketer. I think for the end user, obviously, you know, uh, being able to and not have to look at screens is one thing, but I think it, it is the next iteration uh, in enabling a user to do more things or to do things in more situations, right? Um, so for example, the smartphone became a big thing because it enabled or the mobile phone and then the smartphone became a big thing because it enabled us to do things while we were outside of the office or the house, right? So we could do basically email, the first uh, generation, you could do email and you could do some basic browsing. Um, and then, and of course, we can do phone calls, right? So phone calls, remember when we couldn't do phone calls unless we were in the house or in the yeah, office? They were attached <laughs> to the wall. They were yes, attached exactly. to the wall. Remember that? Remember. <laughs> Probably the people who are remembering it's, it's a shrinking cohort. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, we could do things um, in other places, right? I think um, I think with, the, with with audio and interactive audio or just audio, I think what we can we can do now is we can do things with our eyes and our hands, not having to do something. Up to this point, we've had to look at something and tap, right? Which excluded lots of situations, lots of use cases. That's why we're seeing automotive emerge because now you're driving, obviously your eyes and your hands should be busy uh, and you're able to ask uh, and, you know, listen and so forth and do all of that without having to touch anything. Um, but you can uh, you can see that home as well. At home, there are situations where you're preparing food or you're folding, uh, you're potting a plant or folding food or whatever, where your eyes and hands are busy, but you still want to get information or you want to you know, give information. You want to make a phone call using, I don't know, the Amazon Echo. So you, you, you say, hey, uh, call, uh, you know, call Jody. And then all of a sudden I'm able to talk without having had to put my, uh, or wash my hands if I was preparing food and so forth. But anyways, I think the emergence of audio is part of that evolution where um, it's uh, we are being able uh, to do things in, in more and more situations, just like the smartphone was a, a big um, disruption. Anyway, I just wanted to put that on the table because it will help us unpack the value. Um, but I didn't answer your question, so. <laughs> it's totally okay. Yeah, I'm sure that we have a uh, we have a, a lot of people who want to ask questions, <laughs> but 
<laughs> but yeah, that does set the scene, definitely. And, and I couldn't agree more. This has been part one of our Clubhouse discussion. Well, that's the end of this episode. Thanks for listening. And if you like what you heard, why not tell a friend about this podcast? It's available in all the usual locations. Until next time.